Here's a typical example of um, cam and crank correlation where we need to qualify it with a known good. So we suspect there is an issue with this vehicle. Um, it's crankshaft, camshaft and number one injector which is always a bonus to keep that one in there when doing correlation. And um, how do we know if this is a good one? Well, we go to the reference waveform library. Remember, you need a username and password for the auto forum, automotive scope connected, and an internet connection. And the make in question is a BMW. It is a three series, um, number of cylinders four. Notice as we get through the search criteria, we're down to 15. And let's try that. Just see what comes up and we'll do this correlation and we're after here we go um, bmw 3 series camshaft sensor hall effect injector current and crankshaft that's cool uh, this is a good according to the upload from uh, pont much so thank you very much for that and we'll pull in reference waveforms so we'll use these as references in our capture so we'll have the camshaft We'll have injector current and we'll have crankshaft, of course. So it looks a bit messy here to start with. Um, let's try and separate these. So there's my original and there's the camshaft. Sorry. There's the camshaft. There's my original injector current and then we'll pull these down here. here let's try and just minimize or change the scaling by hovering over the scale I'm using the mouse wheel to do this this makes life really easy and very very quick indeed all right so hopefully the first thing that comes to light is we are on different time scales so this was uh, 20 millisecond divisions and I think from a previous download that capture was 200 millisecond divisions. so um, we've got far more data than you can see here um, and we can prove that by just going on to the reference waveform and delaying. Um, so here we delay by 50 milliseconds, 60, 70, 80, so on and so forth, and then we double. Um, if that capture on the waveform library was 200 millisecond divisions, we've actually got two seconds worth of data to scroll through here. All right, so what we need to do is get some kind of alignment between what we've downloaded and what's actually in our original capture. And the quickest way to do that is to align. I'm going to align with injector current because that works really well. So we've got that point there and that point there. We've got 98.97. So if I go to um, the delay option for our reference waveform and I enter in here a negative value because I want to move this waveform to the left. That's negative 98. 0.97 and it's milliseconds and we'll see straight away there we've got some reasonable alignment with that first event not with the second event why is that well that's because our engines are running at different speeds so a number of issues to tolerate here one is the fact that these captures are on a different time scale and then the engines are running at different speeds uh, of course we can prove that if we use the time scale here uh, time ruler sorry and just measure one rotation of the crankshaft on our original capture is 782 rpm and now on the downloaded capture from the reference waveform library they are 837 832.7 so that is a little bit of an issue but all in all we can tolerate that so going back to the delay that we created we created a delay of 98.97 we must do the same with all waveforms. So we'll go to the reference waveform and uh, we'll delay that as well. Uh, 98.97 milliseconds. And that, oh, I never put negative. So that's what's happened. Because I haven't put a negative value, the waveform has moved to the right. So um, Let's change all that all together. So it's negative 98.97 milliseconds. Okay, that's better. So let me just check 
98.97 and then finally we do the same with the crankshaft so that is negative 98.97 milliseconds so now we see that we're starting to get some form of alignment um, yeah looking at the start of the capture I think we're not too far away but of course they're going to go out of sync again because they're on different speeds so to get some order here let's add a scope view so we'll go to views and we'll add scope view and if we click on the scope view tab here and just drag this onto the uh, I, uh, graph view there we can actually organize these in columns and i think it'd be a good idea at this point to populate scope view 2 with our items from the reference waveform library those are the references and we'll remove the originals likewise when we click on scope view 1 we can remove the downloaded captures the reference waveforms and keep the originals and let's get a little bit of alignment going i think we could probably make more use of the the graph view here that's looking pretty good let's reduce this just a little bit so we got some kind of symmetry again just hovering over the scale and now we can bring out at uh, rotation rulers so rulers now and we'll go on to um, phase and we'll start working with scale view 2 and we'll use that as our reference point there and then 720 degrees later the same point so 360 720 there we go and we'll choose a point in which to measure but prior to that let's just do exactly the same with this side so rulers ah oh, phase rulers not graph rulers exactly the same from this point here to 720 later brilliant so we're getting some kind of um, alignment now between the two and we'll start here on the far left because we know we're running at different engine speeds so as we move on we're going to see a change that we'll have to tolerate but we are really interested in tooth count at this point and it's probably a good idea to bring these closer to in alignment right. and let's zoom in on this area here and see what values we've got so um, let's go from that first falling edge of the larger pulse after the missing tooth to the first rising edge of our camshaft and we have uh, 32.78 degrees and a tooth count of one, two, three, four, five, five and a half. All right, let's repeat that now on our um, capture from the reference waveform library. We've gone from the first rising edge of the missing tooth, after the missing tooth, sorry, which is there. Let's move that out of the way. And we're going to the first, sorry, we went to the first falling edge after the missing tooth, to the first rising edge of the camshaft thereafter. Okay, and we are on 40.72. Now there's a concern straight away. Right, let me move that away. That's not good. What have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six nearly seven teeth to that point there which equates to 40.72 on this side here one two three four five and a half okay so we are what Lee appears to be at least one tooth out maybe more maybe there is a little bit of fluctuation or movement in the chain on these vehicles so yeah it looks like we have a um a positive case here for um possible chain issue um, ironically this vehicle here is running fine this is actually my vehicle so looks like i've got work to do now but nevertheless there is a um, method in which you can align um, 
reference waveforms from the library that are captured on different time bases and also accommodate uh, the difference or the changes in engine speed. Alright, I hope that helps.